Hello, welcome to the first official video for CLI Magic. I had made one before, but it was mostly just for testing and also didn't have any sound in it. Uh, in this video, I want to demonstrate use of the tar command. Uh, this is kind of a basic command to be using, but for the people who are learning Unix, it's a very important one to know, both for com creating archives of files and also for untarring existing files. We're going to start out with just creating a, a tar file. Here I have a directory of files. This is actually from the CLI Magic survey that I did back in January. Uh, so I have a good list of, of 27 files that I can work with here. So tar by default will create an archive that isn't compressed. Um, at first I'll just create a, an archive here. I use the C command for create. Uh, v and F are also uh, options that I often use. V stands for verbose, or in, th in this case of tar, it'll actually just list out the files as it adds them to the archive. Or if you're untarring it, it'll list out the files as it untars it from the archive. And then F, the F option is so that you can specify a, a file that you want to create um, basically the tar file that you want to create. Tar can also work off of standard input and standard output so that's why you have to specify the F option if you actually want to create or work with a existing tar file or you want to create one. So I'll call this one survey basically the directory name with dot tar at the end. You give it the name of the tar file and then this can be afterwards can be um, a list of files it could be a single directory you know oftentimes you want to just tar up a, a directory that you want to back up so I'll give it the directory name and hit enter and it shows the files in the directory as it adds them to the archive and we wind up with this 60 kilobyte tarball tar file here that's not compressed uh, if I run like file on it, it'll just say POSIX tar archive. Now, if I want to compress it, which usually you want to do, then I could just use the gzip command and compress the archive, and it turns into a much smaller tar file. Uh, quite a bit of savings there on on file size. Of course, this is all textual data. Here, if I run the file command, it shows that it's now gzip compressed data. The file command doesn't actually know that it's a tar file inside. Uh, it's simply looking at um, like magic bits, you know, in the the file itself to see what type of file it is. It's not going by the file extension. Well, okay, I guess it tries to be smart here, and it it says it was this. But it's probably just, you know, gzip is probably just saying if you remove the .gz extension, you get this as a file name. So now we have this tar file. If you want to go through and actually create the, the, um, a compressed tar archive on the fly, then we'll go ahead and remove this one that we created and we'll create another one. I'll use Control R to go back through my command history to find the tar, uh, the tar command that I ran. I'll type in Control R and then T A R, and that doesn't find it right away because it's matching the T A R in the in the remove command that I just ran. And if I hit Control R again, it'll search back further in my command history. And there's another instance. Hit again. There's another instance. Again, and a couple more times and I find the instance that I'm looking for. Then I press uh, left or right arrow on my keyboard to say I want to start editing this this command in my history. So I go to the beginning of the tar command and I add a Z which means I want to pass this uh, tar file as it's created through the gzip command. It actually probably uses a gzip library as it creates it. and uh, then go back to the other side of the command and add a extension. You don't actually have to create the extension, but you know, for convention and so that it's more readable, you probably want to add it on there. 
So now I'll hit enter on this, and now it's created the the tarball and added all the files to it. So now if I list it out, I see that I, I get the same compressed file that I would have if, if I ran the gzip command uh, separately, but I only have to, you know, run one command and it passes it all through by default. And then, of course, if I want to untar uh, a file, I would use the extract option. Uh, here, I, you know, I'm in the same directory where I created it, so let me move the survey directory out of the way for a second here. I'll just call it dot temp. And then I'll run tar z x v f. The x stands for extract and the other options mean the same thing as they did previously. Having a little bit of trouble with the autocomplete there. <laughs> and um, so I can extract here. Probably the first thing you always want to do if you're working with a tar file that you you don't know about is to use the T option. T um, I think means test and it's basically a way of seeing what's in the tar, the tar file before you extract it uh, to see if it's going to untar to a new directory you know like it's it's going to put all the files that are in there into a subdirectory or if it's going to try and put them in your current directory which uh, when tar files do that I, I typically call it a tar bomb because it's usually something that you don't want it ends up you know potentially clobbering files in your current directory um, like you know readme or, or whatever that you might already have in like your home directory uh, so to avoid running into tar bombs you always want to use the uh, T option first uh, and make sure that it's going to put into a new directory if you find that it is a tar bomb and it's going to untar to a uh, the current directory you're in, then you can um, just go back and, and create like a, a new directory to um, to put the files in and go into that directory and then you can untar it normally. So of course this isn't a tar bomb. I actually specified a, a subdirectory when I created it but you can see I untarred it and it put the it put the directory right there with the files inside okay so that's the first attempt at making a video for CLI magic I look forward to making future videos for you if you have any questions or, or comments or you want to see other things uh, feel free to post some comments in the video um, in the comments area of the video so that we can get some feedback alright thank you